Yo, what it do, squad? It's your boy Geek Samurai, and welcome to another episode of Geek Samurai TV. Now, on this episode, I want to talk about the premiere, the HBO premiere of Lovecraft Country. This show is nothing, nothing that I've expected, son. Straight up, squad. This show it is weirder than weird. And I'm a horror nut, so I didn't know. I saw the trailers. I did a video, a previous video about it. But I didn't think that with the Cthulhu's and all these creatures that are actually in here, I didn't think it was going to get that weird and that extreme that fast. As soon as you start watching this, the first couple of scenes. Yes, it's in Chicago. Yes, it's, it's during a time where racism is, is prevalent. Yes, the, all of those are there. All of those check off the, the check mark box. All those are there, but man, this dude had a weird dream about an author named Lovecraft. His name is Tick, short for Atticus Freeman. This dude was having dreams, and as soon as you open this the actual episode, he had a dream about what he was reading, about monsters and creatures and taking over the world, and you see that the, it looked like it's a war going on, and everything's in black and white, whether it's, it's not Civil War, it's World War One, World War Two. And all you see is just a black, a Negro soldier. That's what they were called back then. Serving in the army. It looked like it was him. It was Atticus. And dude, all of a sudden, you see it goes from black and white to freaking picture. You had color. You had picture. You had all of that. And then all of a sudden, you see these Cthulhu's flying in the air with these wings and everything. You see spaceships. And all of a sudden, you see this woman coming out of the space, and she looked like an alien. Her name is Jamie Chung. She played in The Gifted. I remember Jamie Chung, man. She was The Gifted. She played Blink. She comes down dressed in like this purple alien makeup skin or whatever, and she's hugging Atticus. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And also, you see this big ass, before that scene, all you see is this big ass Cthulhu pop up, roaring at freaking Atticus. Or whatever. And then you see. You see freaking number 42. Jackie Robinson. Take his bat. And destroys the Cthulhu. Chops the Cthulhu in half son. And all of a sudden the Cthulhu just regenerates his body. Reforms his body. Comes back into shape. And he's roaring. And Jackie Robinson is fighting the Cthulhu. What the. F Bruh. This show. I can't even explain how weird, and I, I just love it. It's weird. It's chaotic. It's like Doom Patrol, but uh, much better. HBO does not hold back with their TV show. And since they did Game of Thrones, let me tell you, they ain't going to give you no low-quality, pract practical CGI bullshit. They're going to give you the nitty-gritty, the real creme de la creme. After those dragons from Game of Thrones, the, these Cthulhu look so real, dog. It is insane, and I love it. After Game of Thrones, Westworld, HBO, it's like watching. It's like going going to the movie theaters when you watch HBO TV shows now. From Game of Thrones, from Westworld, from His Dark Materials, the list goes on. I love HBO. I, I love HBO Max now. I'm addicted to HBO Max because I had HBO now, and now I get this on HBO Max. I'm so on board, son. Like it is really. Donkulous how good this is. So good. And then we come across other characters like Uncle George Freeman, played by Courtney Vance. He was the preacher in The Preacher's Wife with uh, Whitney Houston and Denzel Washington. I haven't seen this dude in a long, long time. And now he's popping up in this. He's doing big things, man. He's doing big things. I like this guy. He's the uncle. He's the one that was reading, had these books. Or whatever that he collected that Atticus, aka Tick, would you would read Lovecraft books, horror books. He his uncle's a big horror fan, so he loves these horror books. So here comes Tick. He wakes up out of that dream, whatever. And he's going back home to Chicago because his father wrote him a letter said I need help, and his father's missing. His father's been missing for two weeks, so he goes to uncle, his uncle, you know George Freeman, and he's trying to find out what's going on. Now his uncle has a wife and a daughter. Named D. I think the daughter's name is D. And he has a wife. And you know, there he's a traveler's guy for Negroes. That's what his uncle does. He goes on a road. He looks for for Negroes that's wandering around from town to town. And he takes them through safe passage. Places that he knows. 
where it's safe for Negroes to be served in a restaurant, can use the bathroom without being scared for their lives. Yo, it's... <sighs> then we get across this woman, Jereen Samat Bell. Now, if y'all don't remember her, she plays Black Canary in um, The Emancipation of Harley Quinn. And she was in a TV show called The Underground. I don't know if y'all big fans of Underground, but I definitely love Underground. And she was amazing in that. About Harriet Tubman leading slaves through the Underground Passage. It was so good. They canceled it after two seasons. I was so mad because that, that it was just a great show. Nobody has picked it up. I forgot what it was on. I don't know if it was WGN. I forgot what, what network had it. It got canceled. So now we see her in another African-American show, TV show. But it is this is weirder than weird. Now, she's coming back home. She sees her sister. They get up on stage. She starts singing with her sister. And the only reason she came back home is because she needed a place to stay. She's trying to find a job. She ain't trying to be working in no low budget, you know. She wants to work in, like, department stores, sh shoe stores, clothing stores. That's what she wants to do. And she wants to probably own a house in the white community. That's what she wants. So she, she finally talked to her sister. Her sister's like, yo, you just only coming back when you want money. You only come through when you want money. No, nah, that's not the case. She said, I'm only putting you up with me for two freaking nights. After that, you got to be gone. You got to be on your way. Because when mama died, you wasn't around. Where were you? So she finally links up with Atticus, and they go on this road trip with his uncle. They're trying to find Negroes to give them safe passage or whatever. So they come across a restaurant. You see the, the, the white man in this restaurant does not want to serve them. He's calling for backup, calling the police, firemen, anybody he can find. All you see is, yo... So my belt, Jereen Simon Bell, she goes, her character, she plays Letitia, Letitia Lewis, Letitia fucking Lewis, that's her name. So she goes back to go to the bathroom and she overhears the actual restaurant waiter calling for backup. So she's telling her, let's get the fuck out of here, let's get the fuck out of here. She gets out of there, freaking Uncle George Freeman and an Atticus tick, they all get up in the car and they're running for their lives, bro. Running for their lives. They finally escaped these men. Another another mysterious gray car stops those men, wrecks their car, makes it tumble a couple times. Those white men are dead. And you see this white woman with red lipstick come out, pops out of the car. It look like she's saving them because she has a plan for them. And we're going to see that further on in this, this TV series. So good. So good. Then we come across this, this racist cop who sees them, you know, wandering. Or, 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 they parked on the side of the road. We see Uncle George driving in the driver's seat. But we see... Letitia fucking Lewis, and we see Tick look at they're looking for the road. It's called Ardham. Ardham. He mistaked it for Arkham, but it's Ardham. This is this road that you cannot find to Ardham because he thinks that's where his father is. So they they're looking through the woods trying to find, and then you see this racist white cop come out of nowhere, tell him, "Hey, you in the car? Get out the car." So Uncle George get out the car, and then you see them all stand behind the car. He has them pinned up against the trunk. And he's like, yo, where y'all going? Y'all know y'all can't be in my country, my county. It's called Devin County. Y'all know y'all can't be in my county. If you're in my county, I'm going to have to arrest y'all. And he said, yo, we're, we're trying to go south. We're trying to go to this road. We're trying to go to this place. No, we don't want no problems. He didn't tell them where they were going. Tick did not tell him where he was going because he's smart. He knows how to read. And he said, oh, you must be the smart one, huh? The smart nigger. Oh, I hate that word with a passion. But that that's just the times back then. You know what I mean? So he's like, yo, y'all not going to go south because it's going to take y'all. The sun sets in like seven to nine minutes. So y'all not going south. It's going to take y'all long to get out of my county. Y'all better go back north. And he's telling him to say, say those words. Pretty please. And then put the word nigger in it. I'm like, yo, really? Really? Like, you really have to be excessive with it. But this show is so good. It, it hits on all the, the, the racial heartstrings for me. It really does because racism is a big thing for me at... I don't like to talk about it or get into it, but these kind of shows I love because I would like to see, even though this is weird, I like those African-American shows that show me what it was like to grow up in that time, even though I never grew up in that time. So they go north, and he said, and they're, they're, they're stressed out. You see Tick driving, and you see the cop, the racist cop is right behind him on the tail, ramming their car. He does a couple times, and they finally get out of Devon County. And as soon as he clear, the cop doesn't go past Devon County sign. As soon as they clear past that railroad tracks, all you see is these four other cop deputies lined up with shotguns pointing at their car. I thought they were free. Nah. And then here comes the sheriff who was following them and ramming them. He goes and follows them. 
Now we get to the part where they're in the woods. They all got out the car. The cops got them out the car again. They're in the woods. Tell them to get face down on the ground, in the woods, in the dirt, face down, hands behind your back. Yo. And then all of a sudden you see these creatures. They look like freaking, they laugh like hyenas. They laugh and giggle like hyenas. I swear to Bob. I swear to Bob Marley, they do. And all of a sudden, yeah, yo, they, these, these cops are getting torn to shreds, ripped apart. But when they get bitten, they turn into those creatures. It's like a vampire. They're like hyena hybrid mixed with a vampire hybrid mixed with a lichen hybrid. It's so freaking weird. And now the, the sheriff survives. He got bitten. He survives. His arm, his right arm got bitten off. He survives, though, with another deputy and, and Atticus, Leticia Lewis, and Uncle George. They go into this abandoned shack or whatever. All of a sudden... They're bordering up the door and put tables there, put shelves there to border it up so that the creatures can't get in. All of a sudden, you see the freaking sheriff turn into the damn vampire and he kills the deputy, rips his neck out. And now these these freaking <laughs> these freaking black people are trying to escape the sheriff now. Because the sheriff, he's a full-blown whatever that creature is. Hopefully they're gonna tell us more about what the creature is, who he is, what what type, where do they come from, how how do they see? Because they are sensitive to light, just like a vampire, sensitive to light. So in their mind, they have to just survive the night. That's all it takes. I'm gonna survive the night. I'm gonna be Gucci, and after that, I'm good to go. Crazy, crazy, crazy. These creatures, they look like they have multiple eyes that blink differently in different ways, different directions, and they just hate light. They hate light with a passion. Those don't, know, don't know if it kills them because we see them jump and run every time they see light. So we don't know if their skin gets burned. We don't know if they, you know, die off. I think bullets could kill them. But we'll see. They, they finally escape these creatures. And now they finally get to Ardham. Ardham, it's like, I don't know. This, it's like a white freaking cult or whatever with these men wearing lawyer suits. And looking proper with these women with these white dresses. And you, all of a sudden, you just see them being invited into this big-ass mansion. Hopefully, that's where his father is. Hopefully, that's where he went. Because if you remember in this in this, in this this season premiere, they said that, uh, I think his uncle mentioned to Atticus that a white man came to him and he left with him. I don't know if it was his uncle or somebody else in town who, because he was asking, have you seen my father? And I think oh, another person in town in Chicago was like, yeah, he left with a white man with a suit. Hopefully when they go to this mansion, when they go to this look like this cult or whatever, this clubhouse, hopefully his father will be there. And that's the end of this freaking season pilot. Oh my gosh, I love it, man. It's so weird and, and cringy and it's just so out there. And I want to know more about Jamie Chung's character. I want to know about her because, like, I'm telling you, she, she her name is Gia. She's an alien race. Like, what is up with those spaceships at the beginning of the freaking episode? What is good? All right, squad, let me know what y'all think about this show. Do you think it's too weird? Do you think it's too over the top? Or do you, are you feeling it? Do you love it? Because I love it, man. I love horror. I'm a horror king. I'm a horror nut. I go hard for horror, man. That's a fact. This show is amazing, and I loved it. It did not waste any time. It was not a slow burn. It hit you right away. As soon as that war in black and white went down, it hit you. And then it goes right into the freaking aliens, the Cthulhu's coming out with these tentacles and these, these freaking fangs, multiple fangs in their mouth. Uh, I can't wait for episode two. HBO still, Netflix is doing their thing right now as, as being the top dog. One of the top dogs in streaming. But HBO has been doing it for decades, man. And because of they have properties like Game of Thrones, they have properties like Westworld, and, and it, HBO will never be th dethroned. Disney Plus is still fresh. They still have ways to go. All they have is Mandalorian. But, yo, HBO Max, they doing their thing, man. And because you have HBO Now or HBO Go, I don't know about HBO Go, but I know if you have HBO Now, you automatically get HBO Max with no cost. It's fifteen ninety nine. Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, I think I'm playing that with HBO now, but it doesn't matter. Because now that you have HBO now, you get HBO Max and you get everything. You get everything. So I'm looking forward to episode two. I'm going to keep bringing y'all my thoughts 
on these episodes every time they drop. They drop Sunday nights at 9 p.m. So y'all need to stay tuned for my next video. All right, squad, y'all already know. Follow me down below on Twitter at Geek Samurai TV. Like, subscribe, share Geek Samurai. And until next time, I'll see you in another video. I'm out.